Amanda Seyfried, what a glorious film you were a part of. I Loved know. it. Yeah. What was it it's like for you? Yeah, like what was it like for you to be trans- uh, transported back to the golden age of Hollywood? Well, first of all, I was, um, I feel like I was living my father's dream. It was a dream come true for, for me and for him because he, he, the golden age of Hollywood is, is, is where he, I think, wish he would have li- uh, survived, got to experience. Um, he's just a movie buff all around. I grew up watching black and white movies my, my whole childhood. And, you know, I never, it was kind of the, the dream I never thought I had to get to transport myself. It's a really good place to visit. I don't, wouldn't want to live there, but I, I um, glamour to see costumes, the, oh, the makeup and the hair. I just, it was, it was a real, it was a real treat. And you got to go there with David Fincher. Um, yeah. We know how notorious he is for his multiple takes, though. So what I want to know is it must be amazing working with him, but what is your record takes that you did with him and how did you feel at the end of the day? I don't know, but I know the props people were able to keep track of how many we'd done because it was it was how many times we lit candles for a cake. <laughs> and I don't remember what it ended up being. Um, many, because there were many people and there were many pages and, and there were many, many angles on each, each person. person. So, so and, and everybody, everybody was, talking was talking over, over each, each other. other. So, so there, there was just, just cameras, cameras were moving, moving around, around for a week, week, you know? And so that's a lot of takes. I don't even know. But I, I will say that I learned that having that time and that space to 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 find moments that you wouldn't otherwise find if you didn't have that kind of time is is priceless. I mean, it, it really truly is transformative. It actually takes you from one, you go to a completely different place by the end. You're just, yeah. you leave no stone unturned. And finally, at one stage uh, in the film, Marion turns around and says, I just saw 42nd Street and it blew my wig. I'm sure your mind has been blown so many times in this industry. And I loved on Instagram, you put up a throwback pic of you and your Mean Girls cast at um, your very first awards show. Do you remember how you were feeling then and do you still get blown by this industry? I think I was probably had a, one of my one of the panic attacks that I've experienced on that red carpet when I was dressing myself, doing my own makeup. I didn't know any better when I was at the MTV Movie Awards. I I think I was always I think I'm always able to be surprised because my expectations are quite low, and that's not because it's to be self deprecating. It's just that I don't want to be disappointed, so I learned to not have high expectations. And I'm always surprised. I'm always shocked. Um, you know, I have had a lot of moments in my career where I've just I've met people that I never expected to meet, and I've I've been places I never expected to be. And I remember every night after shooting in Mamma Mia One when we were in Greece, I would do, do my exercise. I would before the sun would set, I would run up this the, the hill, like kind of the mountain that we were uh, living on the at the bottom of in our hotel. And I would sit there at the top and look over this, I mean, the lagoon, like it was, God, I can't even explain it to you. And I would sit there every night and just marvel at where I've come in my life and the fact that I was able to be there alone at the top of the mountain and meditate on like how lucky I was. So like, I find moments like that all the time because I have to. Well, Amanda, here's to many more moments for you and thank you because we get to enjoy them as well. Thanks. Thank you. That's awesome. (laughs)